In this video I want to talk about Rises for more general electronic music production mainly. There's going to be some overlap with the videos that I have on Risers for trailer sound effects and more cinematic music production, but sonically we're looking for something a bit different here. And these sounds are going to be more like something that you would probably find in an EDM sample pack. But let's jump right in here with the default preset in Vital. And you can start with any oscillator you like. I would just suggest that you start with a waveform that's quite rich. So maybe not something like a sine wave. We want to have a more full sound to start with. So the basic idea of a riser is uh, typically rise in pitch, of course, and also rise in volume. So we can make a really basic setup here to start with. And we're going to use LFO 1 in this case. You can also use an envelope and have this LFO modulate the pitch of this entire patch here. Sometimes you don't want it. Sometimes you want to have more control over the pitch of individual oscillators. And if you want that, then you would just use LFO 1 just on the pitch of oscillator 1 maybe and then if you were to introduce more oscillators you would just use different LFOs to modulate the pitch of those. So let's head over to the matrix and we're going to use LFO 1 and set this to the global voice transpose. And let's also set this to just one octave for now and then you want to make it a shape like this. You can adjust the curve as you like but we should in general just have a rising shape like this. Let's also set this to envelope mode and make this a bit longer and now we have a sound like this. Which obviously on its own sounds really boring, but this is the basic setup of a riser. And now you want to add more movement to this. And you can do that by adding more elements, or you can also just add more movement to this individual oscillator. So we can start by doing this, for example, by using another LFO on the level of this one. And now we have a sound like this. You might also want to increase the tempo on this one to make it a bit more interesting. You can also use this to create a stutter effect by drawing in a shape similar to this. And you can also just make use of the unison function up here and give it a few voices and it's also detuned a bit. Now very often you don't only have a tonal element like this, but you have a noise element as well on top of it. Or maybe just a noise element. So let's for now deactivate oscillator 1 and just activate the sampler down here with the white noise. You can obviously use any noise you like. Very often white noise is used. Now since we can't really pitch white noise up or down, we need to use different methods to give this a rising movement. And so we can obviously use just LFO 1 on the level of this, so it's simply rising in volume. Which sounds quite boring, of course. It sometimes works for really short, quick rises like this one. Where you essentially just whoosh into something. But for lower ones, you need to have more movement to this. One way you can do this is to use a filter. So let's just activate filter one down here, route the sample for this. And now, especially with the resonance here, we can give the white noise a bit of a, almost a tonal character, which makes it a bit more interesting. And we can use LFO1 again on a cutoff of this. And now we can go back to our oscillator 1 and just layer this on top of each other. We can also give this white noise the same stuttery movement here. So let's use LFO 2 on the pitch and actually disconnect it from LFO 1. And now we have this. And sometimes you also want the stutter effect to increase in tempo. So what you can do is you can use our stutter LFO 2 here and set this to seconds. So now we can adjust the frequency of this. And now we can use LFO 1 to modulate the frequency of LFO 2. So in our matrix, we can just go here to LFO 1 and here LFO 2 frequency. And now we can adjust the range of this and the starting frequency. Now we can also use a second oscillator. You can just use a different waveform if you want to. Uh, you can also have it play at a different pitch to make just the sound a bit fuller. And let's also use LFO 1 on this. And also give this a few voices as well, which puts it a bit more in the background. But now this sound is still really dry, so we want to add some effects to this. Especially like using reverb to help with the rising effect. So essentially, the closer we get to the climax of this, the more in your face the sound should be. At the start, it can be a bit more washed out. So you can use a reverb and set the mix really high at the beginning and then gradually reduce it as the sound progresses over time. So we can use the Solemn LFO 1 here as well and just set this to 100% at the beginning and then we are going down to roughly 50% as the sound progresses. Obviously, you can also just change the settings of the reverb itself, depending on what kind of sound you're going for. But the general technique is to just uh, modulate the mix according to the rising of the sound.
obviously you can do very similar things with other effects that modulate the sound a bit. So like a chorus or a flanger phaser that we have down here. If you want to have a really wide sound, you can in this case use the delay and make use of the Haas effect. So just set this to stereo mode and these two two seconds. And now we are just going to delay one side slightly more than the other one. Uh, set the feedback to zero and the mix to 100%. And now we're going to have a really wide sound. You can also use distortion to, again, increase the overall rising effect and just use LFO1 on this and then just distort the sound a bit more as it progresses. This is going to help also with overall loudness increase of the sound. You can also use a filter on the entire sound, similar to what we've used here. We could just use pretty much the same thing, use LFO1 on this. Or if you want to change the sound a bit more drastically, you can also use something like a comb filter on this. So with this you can achieve a bit more interesting effects that you can use as layers for other risers as well. And of course you can also just keep adding more elements. So we could use a third oscillator, and let's deactivate everything else, and use this for something a bit different. We can use another LFO on the level of this and maybe make something like a plucky sound with this and deactivate the comb filter here. can also pitch this up a bit maybe. Increase the tempo of this. And then you can just layer everything together. And now the nice thing is that we have pretty much everything mapped to LFO1. So let's make this twice as long for now. So now we've gone through various stages of this where we have added more elements and added more effects and added more movement. And a lot of these stages could be just risers on their own, where we can go from very simple to more complex ones, because you don't always need very complex risers. Sometimes you need a simple white noise riser, sometimes you want to have a bit more tonality to it, and sometimes you want to have a really complex one with a lot of movement, uh, with maybe something like this plucky sound or an alarm sound on top, with a lot of filter movement, with a lot of reverb. And so these are all just techniques to help you to create the right riser for the particular situation you need it for. So I hope this was helpful and that it inspires you to create your own risers. And I hope that this gives you a few new ideas and techniques on how you can create maybe more interesting risers.